Hey guys, it's Ropsy back with Paperless Student. In today's video, I will be doing a complete review of Things 3 for the iPad. Here's everything you need to know. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're looking for a solution to go paperless with your studies or your business. And if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when I release a new video. Things 3 is a task managing app that is available for your iPad, your iPhone, and Mac. You have to buy the application separately for each platform. The application costs $10 for your iPhone and Apple Watch. It costs $20 for your iPad and $50 for your Mac. All these are one-time purchases. I bought the iPad version and I have been resisting to get the iPhone version because I've managed without it so far, so I'm not really seeing the value of buying it. Note that this application is not available on any other platform. They don't even have a web version for it. I don't think the developers have any intention of creating this application for other platforms like Android or Windows. The application doesn't sync through iCloud. Your Things Cloud account is what you'll need to sync across your devices and it also gives you the ability to mail to-do lists to yourself from other devices. This is something that I will talk about in a separate video but basically with your Things Cloud you can then create your to-do lists from other devices through mail. And so here's the application. Pretty much everything happens on this page here. So on the left you have your navigation bar. At the very top, you have the search tool. You can tap on it or drag anywhere on the screen to activate this window. And this allows you to search through your to-do lists. If you wanted to search something quickly and you don't want to navigate through it, you can use this feature. This inbox contains your to-do lists from your Reminders app. You can choose what lists you want to see in Things 3. These are all the lists that I have in my reminders and I want to import just my shopping list and nothing else. There's also an option to import everything from reminders. So if you created your list in reminders, but now you want them in your Things 3 application, you can easily import everything. And something to note is that Things 3 won't show reminders that contain images as the application doesn't support images. So your reminders application allows you to have images in your list, but Things 3 doesn't support images. The application only supports texts and nothing else. So I have this reminder with an image and it's not showing up in Things 3 and it will not be imported. When you import your to-do list from your reminders, you can now treat it as though it was created in Things 3. So you can pretty much do everything that you do in this application if you were to create your to-do list in here. And once you import them from reminders, they disappear from the reminders app. And I really like this, the fact that they are automatically deleted from your reminders app. You don't have anything duplicated in different applications. And if you don't want to import it and you want your reminders to remain in your reminders app, you still have the ability to just look at them and see them in the application without necessarily importing them into Things 3. This today section shows me all the stuff I need to do today. On my today's list, I have this section here. It contains my schedule from my calendars. It has a timestamp on the left here. All the information that is imported to your Things 3 from your calendars will have a different format. And the color of your timestamp, the time indicated here when I'm supposed to finish the task, this will tell you what calendar your schedule is from. This is if you have multiple calendars like I do. You can't really do anything to this section that is from your calendars. It is just there for you to view in the application so that you don't have to go into your calendars separately if you have anything that is scheduled in your calendar. App. Below this, I have the to-do list that I created in the application for this day. This section I can interact with. According to my notifications, I have one task to accomplish today. And then this other task is just a reminder. It's not on my to-do list today and it's not in my notifications. I set a reminder to appear for this task a day before the deadline, which is why it is saying one day left. So when I do complete something on the list, I simply tick it off by tapping the checkbox and it disappears immediately from the list. It keeps my list very clean and small and, you know, to the point. So that's really refreshing. Anything that I don't accomplish today is automatically pushed forward to the next day. 
and upcoming I can see next week at a glance starting from the next day. I can also see the rest of the month and I can also see the next four months all at a glance. Under any time I have all the tasks that I haven't scheduled for any specific dates and all my tasks without a deadline. Some day is sort of similar to any time but for some day you actually have to set the task for some day for it to appear here and some day could be next year, it could be 20 years from now. It depends on your definition of some day. Then the logbook shows all the tasks that I've completed in the past. If you accidentally tick something off that you haven't completed, this is where you come to untick it or to mark it as incomplete by just tapping this checkbox. And so if you accidentally tap something and you want it back on your to-do list, then you can just come to your logbook and remove it. Things three lets you create projects and areas. A project is a really big task that you need to go through over a long period of time, for example. And areas are groups of projects. Like, for example, I have an area for work. You can have an area for school. You can have an area for personal life. And then you can have different projects in those areas. So let's look at this project that I have of things I want to buy. I have a title for the project here at the top. On the left side of my title, I have this small pie chart. This indicates a rough idea of how much I've done from this project. So I can schedule this whole project for a specific date. I can set a reminder so that the application notifies me about it at a specific time. And I can tag the project. If I don't like the tag options available, I can create a new one for this. And I can also search through my tags if there are too many to go through. You can also manage the tags by simply editing them or deleting them. You stay organized as much as possible. I can set a deadline for my project and the application can then count down the days left before the project is meant to be completed. This is very useful to help you stay focused on your projects and make sure that you don't miss any deadlines. I can choose to repeat this project. So you have two options when you want to repeat your project. You can repeat your project after you've completed it or you can repeat the project regularly every two or three weeks like that. It makes more sense to repeat a project after you've completed it. I can set this application to create a new copy of this project after a few days. So if I finish my project and I want a few days, weeks, months, even years to rest from the project, I can set that. Let's say I'll, this is a project that lasts me a month and I'll be doing it every three months. The application can allow you to automate all of that. I can also set my project to repeat regularly, which is every day, every week, every month or every year. And I can decide when I want the project to appear on my to-do list. I could allow that project to appear in my to-do list as a reminder from anything between 0 to 14 days before the deadline. When you set a reminder, you get a notification on your device to get your attention. You can move your project to a different area. For example, if you are not happy with where you've put your project or if your project doesn't have an area, you can just decide to move it to a different area, which is a different group of projects. I can duplicate this project. Only God knows why I would want to do that. That makes no sense. If anyone can think of why I would like to duplicate a project, let me know. I can share my project, which means that I can export it to different applications. And there are quite a few applications that you can share your project to. So that's pretty neat. And lastly, you can just delete the project if you are bored with it. But note, once you delete a project or when you delete something, there's no way to recover it. So you want to make sure whatever you're deleting, you are sure you don't need it. Projects can have headings to make your tasks that much more organized. My project has two headings. I have applications I want to buy and I have gifts that I want to buy. So to add a heading to your project, simply tap on this downward arrow here on the top right corner and tap new heading. It's that simple. And then you can name your heading whatever you want. So under each heading, I then have my tasks. 
The tasks with this paper icon on them contain notes. I wrote something about the task, which I can quickly just look at. For this particular task, it's a link to the application that I would like to buy, which is very handy. Then under gifts, I have this icon instead of the paper icon, I have a list icon and this shows me that my list has subtasks. So sometimes you want to achieve something, you want to accomplish something, but there are several steps that you have to take and this application lets you create those several steps. So for example, under glasses, I want to buy computer glasses and I have the different people that I want to buy computer glasses for and I will tick off their names as I buy each person's glasses so that I don't miss anyone. And so this, this is just my family and yes for those of you that are wondering these are the names that i call them i don't call my loved ones by their actual names i always have a nickname for everyone areas in things three are places like i've already said these are places where you group your projects so under my work area i have three projects i can see each of them by tapping on it or i can access them from the sidebar at the moment, none of my projects have deadlines, so I am working through all of them as much as I can at my own pace. I will do what I can, when I can, how I can. It's a very vague plan. <laughs> I can easily just move my projects between areas by simply dragging and dropping, and I like it. It's very pleasant. So if I create a project and then I decide later on that I want to put it under a certain area, I just have to hold and drag it to that area. The application allows you to have a couple of settings for different things. For example, you can activate things cloud. You can add some Siri shortcuts. I'm not a huge fan of Siri. She still has to grow on me, but you can add those. You have to create the same shortcuts for your phone again if you wanted them on your phone because the application doesn't sync your shortcuts. I don't like doing things twice. Once I've done something and there is some syncing mechanism, I expect it to be automatically updated across my devices. You can also turn different calendars on and off here. So you can choose to show one specific list from your reminders or you can choose to import all the information from your reminders app. For dark mode, you have two options. You have a dark option and a black option and this application differentiates between the two. The dark option is not as dark as the black option that just sounds weird but that's how it looks um so this really depends on your preference if you really like the really pitch black color the dark option is a dark gray so it, it really depends on what you prefer under general, you can choose how you view your tasks. You can turn off notifications completely. I am not a big fan of notifications and most of the times I have notifications turned off. You can also choose what notifications you get. You can get notifications on deadlines only if you really want to pay attention to your deadlines. Or you can get notifications on tasks you want to accomplish on that particular day. And lastly, the last option you have is to get notifications from today and from reminders. You can also choose how you want your information presented. I have my information presented in any order because I find this minimalist and better. I have tasks to do for this day regardless of what project they're in. But if you prefer to see your projects, you can do that by choosing the group by list. And when you group your tasks by list, then you know what project they're from. And you can easily access the whole project by just this tab to see the whole full project. For your logging, why you would want to wait a day or choose to do it manually, I do not know. When me has done something, I want to see it disappear immediately. It gives me a sense of accomplishment, which is why I have my option set on immediately. I don't want to wait a day before it disappears. I love tapping a task that I've done and just watching it disappear. Ta -da! It's gone. I just feel so accomplished. I feel responsible. <laughs> It makes me feel good. I really like that. It's one of the features I absolutely love about this application. It makes me happy. <laughs> you can choose when your week starts. Usually we have to pick between Sunday and Monday. But in things three, your week can start on a Thursday or any other day you fancy feeling adventurous. I get that we all have different preferences and it's cool. I respect that. So if you want to start your day on a Wednesday in things three, by all means, knock yourself out. Things URLs are a bit technical. Lastly, under settings, you have diagnostics. 
Now, let's talk about creating a to-do list in this application. You can select what section you want to create your list in from this sidebar. And so for today, I want to create a task because I have to do some shopping. Then I will list the things that I want to buy with this subtasks tool. And I will also make a note to myself that I want to spend less than $15 on this. I am trying to be a responsible adult. <laughs> I will tag my list errands because this is an errand and I'll put a deadline for Sunday. In case I'm too busy being productive, I don't actually get time to do this today. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a determined human being, so I might not have time to go out and shop for food that I need to survive to remain determined. But who cares? I can always schedule it for tomorrow or this evening or any other day, but uh, I'll just put a deadline for Sunday so that in case I don't get it done today, I'm going to do it tomorrow or on Sunday and I'll see how it goes. At the bottom of the page here I can get to choose if I want to move this task somewhere um, to a project perhaps. I can repeat this task. This is one of the things I love most about planning applications versus using planners is that I can automate things. I can repeat recurring tasks and I don't have to do them manually or put them into my planner or diary every day. Let me know what you guys prefer. Do you prefer planning with a digital planner or you'd rather have a planning application? I can convert this to-do list into a project. Like the application says, some to-do lists turn out to be bigger than we think. I can duplicate this list. Again, don't get why I need to do that. Oh, I can share it. I wish this application could support images of files. It would really make things a lot easier. So for tasks that have visual ideas, you probably need a different application. And I think this is really holding the application back. When I have visual tasks and things that have a lot of images that I want to attach to my tasks, then I just do that in Notion at the moment. I'm using Notion for that. Lastly, you can delete your to-do list. And once you've deleted it, it's on forever. If you create a new task in the wrong project, you simply just drag and drop it into the correct one. You can also simply just drag it and drop it into the right heading within the same project. So really this drag and drop feature that they have in the application is really amazing. You can literally move and change anything by simply dragging and dropping. Since Apple decided to remove the wishlist option from App Store, I need to create my wishlist elsewhere. I'm not really happy about that, but thanks to Things3, it's very easy to do. Um, all I need to do is choose the application I want to buy later in the future, and I add it to Things3. I can drag it to the right heading. Besides the lack of support for images and files, another feature missing in Things 3 is collaboration. You can't add people to view your tasks list. The best shot you have at doing this is sharing your to-do list. So if you wanted to collaborate with people on your to-do list and you wanted to invite people to see what you're planning and when you're planning to do it, this is not the application you'd want to pick for that. This is more of your own digital organizer that you just do your own organizing by yourself. And that brings me to the end of this review, Things3 is a great, simple, yet powerful task managing application for individuals that want to plan their days on the go. It is much more useful if you have it on all your devices, but that requires you purchasing the application three times. I am completely against that idea. Considering most applications in this category are actually a subscription, this might not be the most expensive app on the market. Think about that. What's the next planning application you guys would like me to review? Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.